Hey guys, and welcome to Petrol Bed, and welcome to the Honda NSX. Now I don't really know where to start with this car. I have driven one before. A couple of years ago, I got just three laps around the Goodwood Motor Circuit, and it gives you very good vibes very quickly, but it's a car that intrigues me. Many of you will know I used to own a Honda S2000. I had that car for five years, did 90,000 miles, and it was utterly bomb-proof. And since the days of the S2000, the original NSX, I guess the only hot Honda you can buy, really, is the Civic Type R. And they're a hoot. So when the second generation NSX came out, I mean, Honda talked about it for long enough. First things first, this car is actually built in America, so it's more the Acura side of things than Honda. But it is an incredible piece of engineering. There's so much to talk about with this car. The numbers, the styling, the performance. It's a really impressive car. So when my good friends at Hendy said, look, we've got an NSX, would you like to have one for a few days just to scratch that itch to experience it? I jumped at the chance. And I've had this car now for about three or four days. And honestly, it's blown my mind. There are so many things I like about it. I think the first thing is it's a stunning, stunning looking car. When you're driving it around, it's a friendly supercar. People wave at you and give you the thumbs up as you drive past. They let you out of junctions. You park up. I took it up to Goodwood at the weekend for a supercar charity day and parked up in the paddocks and it's just a happy car. Nobody thinks you're a, an idiot or a bit of a dick for driving a supercar. They just love it. A lot of people want to know what it is as well. So let's talk about some numbers. So first things first, this is a hybrid. So it's almost like a cut price Porsche 918 Spyder. Uh, in the back or mid-mounted, there is a three and a half liter twin turbo V6. Now that on its own produces about 500 BHP. But this car is a hybrid and it has three other motors. So in between the V6 twin turbo and the nine speed dual clutch transmission, which we'll talk about it a bit later, I'm not quite sure why a car needs nine speed or nine gears, but it does. There is a, 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 an electric motor and that electric motor produces 47 bhp and then around the front on the front axle there are actually two electric motors driving each wheel and each of those produces 36 bhp now it's not just a case of adding up all of those numbers but the total output power of this car in launch control when you're in track mode is 573 BHP and 476 foot-pounds of torque. This thing is rapid on an unbelievable scale. Honda quote a zero to 60 time of 3.3 seconds. We will put that to the test later on. Honestly, I've only launched this car a couple of times and it feels faster than that to me. And then it will push on to a top speed of 191 miles an hour, which clearly we're sadly not gonna be able to test on this review. But styling wise, now here's a thing, I don't think I would ever be brave enough to spec chrome wheels or chrome finished wheels in the UK until I saw this car in this silver paintwork with the chrome wheels. This car's also got the carbon ceramic brakes. I just think spec wise, it knocks it out of the park, this car. It is pretty well spec. Let's just walk around the back. There's some lovely details around the back. Now, as you come round the back, the thing that always catches my eye is this sculpting of the car and these big side air intakes for the radiators. There's a lot of uh, radiators and cooling at the back coming into where the engine sits. And then you've got these flying buttresses. You can pretty much get your hand through there. It's a, it's a stunning piece of, of craftsmanship and engineering, carbon fiber roof. And you come around the back, and I think the back is quite understated, really. I guess there are elements of other supercars. A few people have said, oh, there's a bit of R8 in here, maybe. And that might well be the case. Um, you've got a uh, large chrome surround for the exhaust exits at the bottom. It's worth noting this isn't the loudest, shoutiest, barkiest supercar ever, but in a way I quite like that. It kind of matches its character. On full chat, it sounds amazing, but when you're driving around town, it's actually not too bad. If we open up the rear 
boot lid. Now, it's not the most practical car in the world. That is your luggage compartment. There's nothing in the front. The front is full of radiators and, and tech and other things. There's no storage space at all. This car is car number 460. We might talk about this a little bit later. I, I still cannot understand why Honda haven't sold more of these because they are sensational. But this car's got the optional uh, satin carbon fiber engine bay detailing, which looks incredible. Now, the motor that sits between the engine and the gearbox, its primary job is torque fill. So although it's a twin turbo, there is such instant throttle response, no turbo lag at all. But it does have some interesting drive modes, which I will show you when we get out and about driving. It has a quiet mode, so it is a hybrid and it can run on pure EV only. Although don't get excited because the battery pack isn't massive, so you can't really run on EV mode for very long or at particularly great speeds. But what it's brilliant at is if you live in a nice little residential area like this, you can put it in quiet mode and sneak out in the morning under just pure electric power until you hit the main road and then turn it up into one of the drive modes, Sport, Sport Plus or track and then you start to step up through how much engine and electrical assistance there is. So quiet mode's a bit of fun and, and I, I've actually enjoyed driving it around especially in car parks and things because people kind of look at the car and don't hear anything and it kind of confuses them a little bit. But yeah so it's not the most practical car in the world but then hey <laughs> which supercar is? But yeah it's a, it's a stunning looking thing. If we come down the side of the car, now for me one of the standout design features of this car are the wing mirrors. I absolutely love the design of these wing mirrors. There's just something about them. I love the fact that they stick out quite a long way. They're sleek. They, they go into the lines of the car. When you're looking at the car from the front, it just makes the car look squat and mean and purposeful. And most importantly, they work really, really well. You've got excellent rear visibility. And when you look in the rear view mirror, you get a big load of this radiator as well, which I just think looks fantastic. You can see that sculpting I was talking about just there. But I just think side profile, I don't think this car has a bad angle if I'm honest. If there's anything that starts to let it down though, it's probably the interior. So safe to say, I'm a big fan of the outside. I think it's got drop dead gorgeous looks. But part of the supercar ownership experience is how special they make you feel when you're sat in them. And the cabin for this car is a really interesting one. There are elements I absolutely love and a couple of elements I'm not so keen on. Uh, Overall, I think it's a very special place to sit in. Certainly the passengers I've had in the car since I've had it have all got in and gone, oh, this is nice. Switch gear lets it down in some places because it's kind of been borrowed from other Honda models, but you can kind of almost forgive it. Let's just have a bit of a chat about the spec of the car because one of the questions I want to try and answer in this review is why don't Honda sell more of these? And one of the criticisms was that they were quite an expensive thing when new. So this car um, is just over three years old and I've actually got the original order here um, and it's got some really nice and quite expensive options on it to be honest. The silver paintwork was an £800 option. These leather seats, they're heated and adjustable seats, they are very comfortable but they were a £2,000 optional extra. The carbon ceramic brakes I've mentioned, ouch, 8,400 quid for those. Um, and then the other couple of big ticket items, the carbon fiber engine cover that I was gushing over before, uh, that was 2,900 pounds for that. So oh, that's a bit, bit of a, an eye water. And then the black Alcantara headliner, that's 1,100 quid. Um, and then the last one is uh, the technology pack, which is an upgraded stereo navigation system, parking sensors and so on. That is uh, £1,700. So on the road, this car was just shy of £155,000. Just over three years later, with 3,500 miles on the clock, this car is up for sale for just over £100,000. And I think that makes it very, very good value. On the whole though, the driving position in this car is pretty good. Um, we'll maybe talk a little bit more about the different drive modes and the, the feeling and, and the feedback you get from the car when we're out driving. The centre console for me 
Um, the, the area where you've got your different choices of how to put it in drive and reverse and park, I just think that's more complex than it needs to be. There is a nice big knurled button here that changes your different drive modes. And then you've got a couple of little storage compartments here and one in there with some different connectors for things like HDMI and USB cables. I am not impressed with that. That is very aftermarket, but if it's not there, Basically, you've got no cup holder or, or drink storage at all in the car. So I'm not a big fan, but I kind of see that it kind of, you have to have it, otherwise you're gonna have nowhere to put drinks. I'm sure that if you had a passenger get into the car, you could probably snap that off if you weren't too careful. And then the last thing to note is that the sat-nav MMI in here is showing its age. I mean, I got in the car assuming I could use Apple CarPlay and uh, I think the sat nav's based on TomTom, Tom, so there was no way that's going to work. Having said that, the sat nav, it works fine, um, but you're not gonna have that kind of phone integration. You can Bluetooth your phone into it for calls, but I think we get so used to, you know, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto that when you get in the car that hasn't got it, you're like, what? Um, everything else is nice. I, I do like the kind of mix of leather and Alcantara and brushed aluminium. It's a beautiful place in here. This car does have a squeak, however. <laughs> I know the guys know about it. The, where the leather and the Alcantara on the instrument binnacle meet, somewhere in there is a little squeak. And I'm hoping it doesn't come out too much on the audio when we're out driving because it's a little bit annoying. So uh, I know that needs some attention. But apart from that, I reckon we get some cameras set up and go for a drive because there is so much to talk about this car. Um, it's the way it drives. I mean, I think I can tick off. It looks sensational. The interior for me, it is a special place in here, even if you put to one side, things like that. Um, let's go out for a drive and hopefully we'll see if we can beat the rain clouds because it's not looking good. Okay, let's try and get out and about before it starts raining. <laughs> Although four wheel drive, I should be okay. Just pop the gate. Now. Seat back into memory position. It's not the loudest, shoutiest startup, which is a good thing. But if I do this and go, so I'm now in quiet mode, put it into drive, take the handbrake off. Oh yeah, full electric. And I think this is super useful mode if you lived in an area where you didn't want to upset your neighbors by starting your V6 or V8 or V12 supercar, you can just mooch out. Now the battery pack um, doesn't last very long in this mode and it's certainly not, don't think of this as a, a mode you would drive around town in a lot. For me, it is, it is what it says it is. It's a quiet mode for leaving your home or um, mooching in, in, in town. If you're in normal mode, uh, it will often drop to the kind of EV mode while you're at traffic lights or in creeping traffic. But I just think that makes this car quite an interesting proposition. But I don't want to be driving it in that mode for very long. Let's go and find some nice roads where we can stick it in one of the more sportier modes. So I am now in sport mode, but running on pure EV. I'm doing 20 miles an hour. If I depress the throttle a little bit, there you go. V6 has kicked in and I'm now driving a hybrid. So really that electric drive mode is just to get you around quietly so you don't upset the neighbors. Sport is the first of the modes to drive in. I'll be honest, I've been a typical car reviewer jumped into it and stuck it in Sport Plus straight away. There is a nice little indicator on the dash that kind of shows you what each mode is going to give you in terms of steering feel and performance and so on. Now this nine speed gearbox, uh, first standard mode is if you just push the little D button there it will just change for itself. I'm now doing 54 miles an hour in ninth gear. <laughs> I remember when my dad got a five speed and we all thought that was incredible. I'm now in a car with nine gears. Now I'm guessing the big thing that's gonna give me is a smaller difference between each gear, so a much more linear acceleration. But what it does mean is you've got a lot of gears to change down, but on a bit of B road like this, you're probably not gonna be up in the eighth, ninth, maybe seventh gears. You're gonna be down in three, four, and five. And in drive mode, it's a very smooth, 
very docile car. The ride quality is pretty good. It soaks up the bumps. It doesn't feel like a harsh and crashy supercar and it certainly doesn't feel intimidating in any way at all. And that for me is the first thing I love about this car. It has supercar performance, but it has family car performance if you don't want to go fast. It's just a moocher. You can just, it's super safe. It's got four wheel drive, even in poor conditions, if it does start raining in a little while, which I think it might, um, it's not going to be an intimidating car to drive. So day to day driving, it, that, that would be great. You know, I've had some, some high performance cars where you know I wouldn't necessarily want to um, put a, a, a more novice driver behind the steering wheel because I'd be worried about you know them I don't know not having enough talent for the car in this sport mode this car actually feels quite docile. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to put the drive mode, I'm going to select Sport Plus, and then I'm going to hit that button, which means I go into the manual gear changes and really get to grips with this dual clutch nine speed transmission. Uh, a couple of things to note I've got brake by wire, and I'm trying to think really hard. I'm not sure how many cars are driven with brake by wire, but I must say the feel for the brakes, there isn't a great deal at slow speed but they are very competent nonetheless. And then also I've got the electronic steering by wire as well. So it is a little bit like playing a PlayStation for real. The, the gearbox, the changes on the gearbox, both up and down are just so quick. But the thing that grabs you the second you get in this car is the throttle response. There is, there's just no turbo lag whatsoever. That motor that sits between the engine and the gearbox performs the most incredible torque fill. And it means that you basically get propelled at the horizon at a rate of knots that is quite astounding. But, and this is the interesting thing, sometimes the supercars I get to drive, they are so fast that you can't really enjoy them on a normal B road because they feel like they need to be on a circuit going at three figures and this one, it doesn't feel like that. Actually, it's a really responsive, enjoyable car at, if you like, B road speeds. wonder whether that's its downfall. It's so competent, it has so much grip, that I think some drivers may well find it a little bit sterile. I personally don't. I think it's a really nice feeling car to drive, but I know some people want that little bit more edgy, the, the noise, the drama of a supercar, and, and you don't get that. This car's just so good at what it does. But for me, it's of all the supercars I've had, the one that I've enjoyed driving down a B road the most, because even at sort of, I don't know, half capability, it still feels really special. sensational performance figures for this car. Apparently it will do 0 to 60 in just 3.3 seconds. It'll do 100 miles an hour in 6 seconds. Sadly I can't test that today because I am on the public highway with these things called speed limits. But it would be rude not to try the launch control feature in the car. So like many of these kind of performance cars, the way you get launch control is we need to go up into the top driving mode. So through Sport Plus, and then you rotate this dynamic mode controller and hold it, and then it drops it into track mode. You'll have just heard the revs go up there. And I'm now in track mode, and what that's done is it's turned off the traction control, but it's also enabled launch mode. All I need to do to launch, I'm gonna stay in the automatic box so that it changes itself. Uh, all I need to do is stop on a nice piece of national speed limit road, put my left foot firmly on the brake, bury my right foot into the carpet, and then it will tell me launch activated. 
I let go and then hold on. Here we go, left foot on the brake, right foot down, launch, ready, go! Whoa! Oh, 60! <laughs> now, interestingly, there's a tiny, tiny hesitation as all the wheels hooked up. But what we've got there is the three and a half litre V6 and all of the electric motors basically dumping as much energy and as much everything onto the tarmac as possible. And believe me, that felt really rapid. Now it is a hybrid, so it has batteries and three motors to carry around. So it does have quite a bit of mass. That said, it's not that you, I don't really feel it that much in the car. I mean, it is a heavy car. I think it's just over a couple of thousand kilos. But when you put it into some bends like this, it's so sure-footed. It gives you such a huge amount of confidence. Look at that, it's absolutely flat round there. Oh my God, this car's good. <laughs> it's like really, really good. Because it's just, it's just so, it's so fast. Yes. What a sensational car. Woo. Now then, calm down. <laughs> let's let's try and draw some conclusions from this one and I don't think they're going to be easy conclusions to draw I'm going to basically put it into a, a more genteel setting maybe we'll go down into sport my final conclusions on the Honda NSX uh, let's start from the outside sensational looking car I mean it, it really is beautiful I've not had I don't, in fact, I don't think I've had anybody I know who's seen the car who said, I don't like the look of that car. And certainly the posts I put on Instagram and stuff have got some f really, really positive, positive comments. Interior wise, I think on the whole, it's fine. There are a few things that are a little bit, if you were spending £150,000 on a car, you probably wouldn't be that impressed with. But used for a hundred grand, oh my days, I'd put up with some dodgy sat nav for everything else. But it's the way this car drives. It is ballistic. It is such a clever car. It's a real Jekyll and Hyde car. Because you can you can mooch around, you can drive it as a daily, it's not intimidating. Around town it drops itself into EV mode and it's quiet, it's not obnoxious. People don't look at you and think, mm, idiot. It's just a, a really well behaved car around town. You drive it down a B or an A road, uh, just if you like normal speeds and it's so well behaved it, it's not highly strung at all and then then you stick it into one of the more dynamic modes sport or sport plus or as we've seen if you're really going for it stick it in track and do a launch that'll wake you up in the morning oh yeah and when you're in those modes it is a stunningly fast car to drive but it has a really nice poise a really nice feel to it and all in all I really like this car now where can I find a hundred thousand quid from because I'm mega tempted honestly if I had that kind of money someone else has had a hit of depreciation and you're left with a car that as a as a living with supercar awesome anyway I need to thank uh, Hendy group and Hendy performance in pool in particular for letting me play with this car for the last few days it's a car I've wanted to get my hands on. You don't see many of them around and they're quite difficult to get access to. So to finally get one on the channel has been brilliant. So massive thank you to Hendy. One of the benefits of being a Hendy brand ambassador, that's for sure. I'd love to know what you guys think. Put it in the comments below. What do you think of the Honda NSX? Why do you think Honda have not sold as many? Maybe it's to do with the badge. Maybe there's too many brand snobs out there that can't see beyond the badge at the technology and the styling and the R&D and the development that's gone into this car. It is a baby 918 Spider. <laughs> it's that simple. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that one. If you have done so, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petro Bed for plenty more to come. And I'll see you on the next film, guys. You take care. Drive safe.